I'm in my car last Friday. I'm traveling on a work trip um, headed from Steamboat Springs, Colorado, south to the Vail Valley, and then onwards from there. I, um, I've got Sirius XM in my car. Most people do these days, I would imagine, if you're in the, if you're in the States. And I'm listening to... I'm listening to the classic vinyl station, <laughs> as you do. And Petty and the Heartbreakers, even the Losers, comes over the speakers. And I'm listening intently. I'm, it, it had been a long week, and it was late Friday morning. Um, I'm on my way home, and it hit the second verse of that song, and <laughs> I started to choke up. I, um, I hadn't heard that song in a long time. I haven't pulled that album in a long time. And this is the thing for me. This is why I have a collection. Because I'm filming this on Monday night. And I'm still thinking about even the losers and the feeling it gave me. It made me feel. And that's what the best music is supposed to do. And I showed you stars you never could see. Baby, it couldn't have been that easy to forget about me. I was suddenly back in junior, senior year in high school, and I had a couple situations in college as well that those lyrics kind of rang true for me and drew me into that song. Two cars parked on the overpass. Rocks hit the water like broken glass. I should have known right then it was too good to last. God, it's such a drag when you're living in the past. I'm going to tell you right now, this is in my top 10 Petty and the Heartbreakers songs. 1979, Damn the Torpedoes, the first album produced, co-produced by Jimmy Iovine. Uh, on the cover is a... 12-string Rickenbacker that Mike Campbell bought in Anaheim, California for $150. That thing is priceless these days. I've seen Campbell talk about it in videos. Jimmy Iovine, before Gated Reverb and Phil Collins and Hugh Padgham, there was Jimmy Iovine and there was Reverb and there was booming drum sounds ushering in the 1980s, and this was an album built on Sonics and fantastic fucking songs. Um, you can say that again. But Sonics were at the forefront of the mind uh, on, on, on Tom Petty and, and Jimmy Iovine's mind. They wanted this album 
to sound fantastic in a car stereo. And believe me, last Friday, I know, I know they achieved their goal. <laughs> I've got a Pinckneyville pressing. It is in near mint condition. This thing jumps out of the speakers. It is a hot cut. And uh, Sterling Sound, Greg Calby, uh, a great mastering engineer. Uh, and he had everything he needed to work with as far as a, a, a completed mix. This, engineered by Shelly Yakis. Uh, such an incredible standout record for Tom Petty and Heartbreakers. Record number three. And I don't know. I, I love... I love latter period uh, Petty and the Heartbreakers, but there's something special about the Stan Lynch albums that he was the drummer on. And, and also, kind of a secret weapon, his harmony vocals with Petty were amazing. And they, they kind of lost that when they lost Stan Lynch. Uh, what was it, 1993, 1994. I think the last thing Stan Lynch was on, he may have been on a track on Wildflowers. I, I know that he recorded those two last, uh, G Mary Jane's Last Dance, um, and the other song that was on the Greatest Hits package. But Stan Lynch, especially on this song, he is just behind the beat, and he is locked in with Ron Blair, and Ben Montench. You know, Ben Montench adds so much color um, to all of these songs on Damn the Torpedoes. That's really, I don't know, that's why, that's why we collect records. That's why it's so nice to come home, pull this off your shelf, drop it on your turntable, and just kind of relax, decompress, and enjoy the music.